Right, welcome to this complete army video. It's for the Orcs. I've got them finished ahead of schedule. I did have a, a big batch of models to paint. Uh, you'll see that unit later on. Uh, but I've, I've searched ahead here and got them completed. I'm trying to knock a number of armies on the head, get them finished off so I can move on to other projects. Because uh, there's a number of other armies that need attention. Uh, and if you're thinking about other armies that are on the channel, uh, Dark Eldar, Imperial Fists, the Red Scorpions, Harlequins are all projects I want to make progress with. Uh, so I'm trying to round off and complete a good number of armies uh, here uh, so I can move on to those projects. So Orcs are finished. I've finished my list here. Uh, a lot of painting involved, uh, as I mentioned, uh, just there for some uh, key units, some new units that I've added. Uh, but you'll see here in this video. It's like a showcase video, you're going to get to see all of the units for this list and then it's going to be a tactics video as well where I'm going to uh, build the army up, gradually introduce each of the units, talk about why I've chosen it, the overall battle plan of this army and sort of talk about how I'm planning to use it in games uh, and then just sort of, you'll be able to stand back later on and see the whole army uh, there and you can judge for yourself to see how effective you think this army is going to be. So. Uh, it's continuing on some of the old trends with the Orcs, uh, the way the way I used to like playing them, I'm continuing on with that trend, but some big improvements I think, and a much more cunning army I, f I think here for the Orcs. So Gut Ripper makes his return now, I think he's back stronger perhaps than ever before, but we'll see. So this list has been a bad... I always propose my list on the Plus channel first, that's in Army Development videos, and that's where subscribers on the Plus channel get to uh, see the list firsthand, just long before it comes out here on YouTube, and then on the Plus channel you're able to make your own comments and, and feedback and use the forums and so on to uh, start the whole discussion about the list. So I've gone through that process there on the Plus channel, and then now the final list is here. So, painted up and ready. Uh, for battles, and I plan to do battle reports on both of the channels using this new list for the Orcs to see how well it does. It's a bit late in the season now, season 6 is almost uh, finished, but uh, it'll be good to see uh, the Orcs making a start here, and then maybe they can start strong then when we head into the new season, the start of the new year. So, Orcs then, really the, the inspiration came for my Orc army came from this artwork here that's used in the inside cover of the new Codex. Uh, and that's aggressive play from the Orcs. It's repeated throughout their artwork here, again, uh, in that piece of artwork there as well. I'll just see if I can find the artwork here. But, yeah, it's here. So, this is uh, classic Orcs here, just this green tide coming through and then overwhelming a gun line. You know, the infantry orc boys pouring over the orc or over the tower, fire warriors here. Uh, and once the orcs are that close, it's trouble for the tower. And so I'd like to try and replicate that in an orc army. So I do want the green tide or this aggressive play from the orcs uh, to see them smash into a line. which uh, <laughs> is very satisfying indeed. Uh, so, and you've got the larger machines sort of following up the vehicles and walkers and so on following up behind. So I've always, that's the first uh, strategy I adopted for the Orcs, or the first style that I wanted to use, and I've always tried to do that uh, since I started collecting the Orcs a couple of years ago. Uh, but I want to try and repeat that now in 8th edition with the new Codex. We're going to try and do it in a more cunning way, and you'll see that here as this list is put together. So the brutal side of this army is certainly there, but you know, brute force is not going to be enough. There's some powerful gunline armies out there, and so the Orcs need to be wise. Orc firepower now is stronger than ever, so it would be uh, foolishness, foolishness, I think, to ignore the firepower the Orcs can use. So you're going to see that in this army list here. You're going to see strength and firepower, but still that head-on charge to try and overwhelm the enemy. It's a shock army, I think, for the Orcs. Turn 1, turn 2 will be the important turns. I mean, in most games of 40k, it's going to be those turns, but especially here for the Orcs, we make or break for them turn one and turn two. Uh, then as I'm putting the list together, now you've got to bear in mind, you know, the turn one, who goes first, who goes second, conundrum. Uh, trying to anticipate how to protect yourself if you don't get to go first. It's a big issue, so I've tried to protect the Orcs as much as I can, so that's a, a big issue as well. Uh, anticipating not going first here with the Orcs and so trying to protect the army as much as possible. Uh, and then really turn one's going to be uh, manoeuvring and softening up and then going in for the kill 
from the remainder of the turns. So in this video I'm going to build up the list here, uh, propose the list, we'll go through all the points, uh, unit sizes and upgrades and so on, along with all the tactics at the same time. So if you're into orcs and looking for uh, how to build an orc list, or if you're thinking about collecting orcs in this video, that should help you out, give you an idea of the army that I have here. And then you'll be able to see this video and then know what the battle plan is and then hopefully see that being played out in the various games in the future. So that's the plan. So the Orc Codex I think is very, very powerful. Orc struggling with the index. And now for the Codex, uh, they're very, very strong indeed. But uh, we'll see how they get on in games. They've started off well, uh, but we'll see how they get on against the different factions and how they cope. Obviously factions like the Ultramarines, uh, Ashramitarum, the Tower, those are the big armies to try and take on uh, and prevail against. And if the Orcs beat them, then you, you never know, you might see, <laughs> you might see Orcs uh, reach the top of the channel. But we'll see. So a number of rules here. Uh, daka, daka, daka. Uh, just making orc shooting that much stronger, especially for their heavier weaponry. So unmodified hit rolls of six always hit, which is really good. And it generates an extra shot as well, so it's extremely powerful. really helps out orc tank busters and mech guns, units like that. And then I've gone for, I'll just cover it now. I'm still going to stick, for my clan cultures, I'm still going to stick with goths. Just to give them a bit more of a punch in close combat. I still really like that idea. Uh, each time you roll an unmodified hit roll of 6 for an attack in melee, uh, made by model of this culture, immediately make an additional hit roll against the same target using the same weapon. I just think it's so valuable. I know there's other good ones out there. Other people have said, you know, try uh, using Evil Sons is a good one and others, but I still really like the 6s there in close combat. It's just really going to help out some of my characters and my infantry units just to give them a bit more punch in close combat. So I'm going to stick with that one, but it's, it's all open for experimentation uh, in different games. But uh, it's going to be Goths, and the colour scheme for their matches nicely with the colour scheme that I have for my army, uh, which is good. And the entire army is Goths, so no mixing up the cultures here. Just going to go all Goths uh, for the entire force. So, I mean, I have, I have met guns. And you know, I was half tempted to try and split the army up and go bad moons with them, which is reroll uh, ones in the shooting phase. That would have been useful, but as, as far as I read the rules here, mech guns, look, keyword here, Gretchen. And for Grotzi, units comprised entirely of Gretchen, which I, I think the mech guns do count as that. Cannot benefit from any clan culture, so this is no point. Uh, that was the only section of the army I might have separated out, so I'm just gonna go goths the whole lot. Uh, for them, just to keep it nice and straightforward. So, uh, other things to bear in mind, just to, just to give you an idea of the strategy here, is here we go, which means uh, you can re-roll charges for the unit, and it's any number of the dice, so one dice, both dice, no problem. So, again, it's nice incentive uh, to go on the attack with the Orcs. Yeah, so bearing, bearing those benefits in mind, uh, we'll go through the list now. Uh, and build this up. So a lot of what I do in my army, a lot of my armies, I usually split them into two parts, like a defensive block and like a long range fire support, and then an attacking part of the army. I've done the same here with the Orcs. So you will see a defensive block here. That, that the aim of that is to sit on objectives, to secure the area, and then to provide long range firepower to, to soften up the opponent as the, the, the attacking part of the army moves in. It is a smaller part, in points wise, it is a much smaller part of the army. It's about a quarter of the points less actually and then the rest of the army is for the attack so most of the points have been spent on the aggressive side of the army but a vital part of it will be this fire support so the structure of the army is battle forged here for the orcs to get three po command points for that i do have a battalion detachment i have, do have my orc boys they've returned to the list so five command points for that i have a vanguard and a <laughs> spearhead detachment as well so i've got 10 command points available uh, and I'll be spending some command points and relics, uh, but 10 command points is the starting amount. So it's a very, very healthy start. Very happy to have 10 command points there. So the first one then uh, is Gut Ripper. Of course, couldn't uh, leave home without him. <laughs> He's a vital part of this uh, orc army. So I have made individual Tactica videos for some of these Orc units, some of the key ones, so check those out on the channel if you want more in-depth and, and Tactica to see how these work 
uh, and a proper showcase as well. I'll zoom in, take a nice closer look at the models. Uh, but here, uh, I've, this is more of a, a, a trimmed uh, version here, just so I can get all of the units uh, discussed and uh, laid out here for you to see. So the Warboss here, first of all, Gut Ripper. So uh, York Warboss is cheap enough. It's 65 points to start off with. And then you've got your Weapon Skill 2+, plus, you've got Strength 6, you've got Toughness 5, you've got 6 wounds, 4 attacks, all really good uh, stat line, 4 up save, and uh, Leadership 8 for him. So, really good. The Power Claw is great, times 2 Strength, minus 3 and D3 damage. Now, as he stands like that, he's okay, and he's alright in the Index, but now with the Codex, he's super strong. Really, really good. So, and I illustrate that in the Tactica video for, for all war, bo uh, war Bosses. Uh, so I paid... 12 points to the custom shooter and rocket here. So this means each turn he can fire a rocket, cause a bit of trouble with that, uh, if he's able to. And then the power claw, uh, pay the points for that as well. So he works out at 90 points. So I think a very powerful HQ that could do a lot of damage thanks to the codex uh, for very, very cheap. 90 points is very cheap for the, the amount of things that he can do. So key of him is to keep him alive and not be reckless with him so often you'll see in games and I think it fits with the fluff really well I'll try and be wise and sensible with him and hold him back the opponent thinks why aren't you going in with Gut Ripper now but he's just waiting for the right moment when the coast is clear and when he can see the target ahead then Gut Ripper goes in for the for the kill <laughs> he's not I don't want to throw him away uh, he's died too many times and has been stitched up miles too many times already so you'll see more of a, a cunning use but I will throw him in but it'll be at just the right point. So four attacks, remember if I roll any sixes it's going to generate himself extra attacks which is really good. So that's the start of the benefits that he gets. Sixes means extra attacks. So then what I do to make him really really good is I get access to the relics. Some shiny gubbins. First thing I give him is the killer claw. So uh, he's Power Claw now goes to times 2 strength, 8 minus 3, it's all the same, but it's a straight 3 damage. So that's very, very powerful. Uh, that's much, much better. No randomness now with the damage, straight 3 every time. So it's got potential there causing 12 damage. You can kill a tank if he rolls up really well. Uh, and then the abilities here, you can reroll wound rolls for attacks made with this weapon. That is excellent. For a relic, that's extremely good. Really, really good. So the Killer Claw makes Scut Ripper and makes his weapon twice as good really really good so excellent and then I make him the warlord and he's brutal but cunning so that fits perfectly with the entire philosophy of this whole army brutal but cunning uh, so this way here reroll hit rolls in the fight phase for attacks made by your warlord uh, so reroll attacks fantastic you know because four attacks is not the most amount of attacks you can get so any misses, you know, it's, it's a shame when that happens, but now you're on re-rolls. Something else to point out here as well with the Relic. Uh, there's no minus one to hit rolls with it with the Killer Claw. So he'll be on twos to hit, and they're re-rollable. So twos to hit, and you're re-rolling those ones uh, with Brutal but Cunning. And remember, you're re-rolling wounds. <laughs> In addition, you know, if, if you think it can't get any better, add one to the damage characteristic of his melee weapons, <laughs> so he's on damage 4 with his killer claw crazy uh, if he charged, or was charged, or performed heroic intervention so horrific now, Gut Ripper he's quite happily, quite comfortably will rip a tank to pieces in one round of combat, like the good old days so, excellent to see uh, him being so strong and it gets even better for Gut Ripper with the use of stratagems so you can play Get Stuck In Lads, you know, that crucial point, maybe he's charged into a Bane Blade, he's two thirds destroyed it, and then uh, you've got this one here, use the strategy in the fight phase when it's your turn to select a unit to fight, or at the end of the fight phase, select an Orc Infantry unit from your army, so that's him, that's already fought once in the fight phase, it can fight a second time. Amazing. Three command points, but oh so, could be worth it at just the right point during a game. There's also uh, Orcs is Never Beaten, this one here, uses strash from an orc character model for your army is slain, so if Gut Ripper dies, maybe he's already had a chance to fight, but then he dies, the model is not removed from the battlefield as normal, can immediately either shoot as if it were the shooting phase, or fight as if it were the fight phase. The model, the slain model is then removed from the battlefield, that's two command points, but again, 
exceptionally powerful. So, really, really good. Excellent. So, there's others that can help out, but uh, those are powerful stratagems there for the Orc. So, Gut Ripper actually now is is uh, one of the key units now for this Orc force. The damage potential from him is astronomical. It really is good. So, he's like the... And, that, and that's why... Almost like the secret weapon of the army, but that's why I want to try and keep him from getting shot up. You know, he's easy, perhaps quite easy to bring down from shooting if he gets caught out. Uh, so I want to try and protect him, bodyguard him, and at the right moment, make contact and cause havoc. So, you know, it's a case of just trying to guide him in, escort him in, and you'll, you'll see the units that build up around him to try and make that happen. So that's the war boss. I think that's an excellent start for the orcs, a great leader to have, and uh, great to see the iconic gut ripper firmly in command. So that's him. Uh, I'm building up the battalion at the moment, so I just need another HQ. So I've taken is a, a uh, we'll go Big Mech on the bike, which is a new conversion that I've done. This one here, it's one of the Orc buggies. You still can see the rockets at the front here, but then I've added on all of this mech stuff at the back. I cut the head off and put a mech head on there on my spare bits and then put a load of grots on there as well just to help out there's one two there's a third grot here on the back with some <laughs> with some bullets and then um a big chopper i've added on as well to cut the hand off and put a spare handle on so he's just carrying the appropriate weapon that i've paid the points for so this is a big mech on a bike now this doesn't come from the codex uh this comes from the index which you're allowed still to draw units from uh, and I've then paid the points, 20 points to the custom force field. So you can see that modelled on there quite nicely. So that represents that nice, uh, quite well. Uh, and then five points to the big chopper, just to keep the cost down. But he can still do something in close combat. Um, that is, in, in the index is 55 points. And then 20 points to the custom force field and five points to the big chopper makes him 80 points. So this is trying to help my army be protected on turn one or any turn of the game but just to try and limit the firepower damage coming through he generates the custom force field at, at a nine inch all the way around so an 18 inch bubble of a five plus invun save so you know one third of the shots coming through i can block them with a five plus invun i think that's gonna be really helpful it's, it's proved uh, worthwhile already um so uh, just I can't stop the opponent from shooting at me, but I can try and block some of the damage from coming through. So uh, that's the plan with him. He, he's mobile, he's, he's, what, it's the uh, uh, Big Mac on the bike from the index. So you've got the nice move, you can keep up with the vehicles nice and quick and escort them up the board, generating uh, that five plus invon save. And then crucially, what's very helpful is he can do repairs as well for being a Big Mac. So D3 wounds restored. You can keep up with vehicles, repairing them as they go along. So a very, very useful important unit for the orcs. Uh, if you want to keep track of the units that I paint up uh, and other pictures as well from battle reports and so on, I'm on Instagram now and so if you follow me on Instagram you'll see updates. I did updates about this guy as I made progress with him and all the other uh, units that are on the painting desk as they make progress. Uh, I put those pictures up on Instagram and I do pictures of uh, games now as well so you can and often it's sneak peeks of battle reports to come so if you want to uh, keep uh, track of all of that and follow me on Instagram and check me out over on that platform. So that's him, very important unit, really happy with how the conversion uh, for him came out. So that's the two HQs, you have to take two HQs for a battalion and the other compulsory choices is troops. So in the previous list I had proposed a list from the index and the way the points worked out I couldn't fit uh, the Orc Boys in. I've gone for other types of units as well, but I, I changed the list around. I dropped a couple of units, uh, and just for the way the points have changed now, things, some things have got quite, quite a bit cheaper with the Codex. I've been able to bring back the Orc Boys, which will bulk this army out really well. I used to run them in trucks, uh, units of 10 in trucks. I've been able to do that again, so which I'm really happy about. So I have uh, my truck's making a return. So there's one of the converted trucks I did using it as an orc buggy, but it's just, it's the right kind of size for a truck, so that's that one. So I'll just reverse him in there. And then uh, another truck here. This is a standard orc truck. And then 
another orc truck. So three trucks. Yeah, this first you owns the opponent to try and get through. Remember they can be repaired now. Ramshack will help them out a little bit. Five plus invun save to protect them as well. So inside there will be the lads. Three units of ten orc boys, and this will bolt the army out, it'll get me a nice lot of command points. And th these will perform a very useful function indeed. So I'm seriously gonna run out of room on the screen in this video. But that's one unit. Here's another unit. One trick I've, I've done is some of these models are all knobs from the from the box set. But I just like to, I don't use them as units, I just mix them into my old boys unit. Because <laughs> it just makes my orcs look even bigger and tougher. Uh, we can get away with doing it. Just There's a couple of big henchy orc knobs mixed in there. There's another unit of 10. And then another unit of 10. So there's different strategies for using orc boys. Others max them out, you know, big blobs of them. And then use, uh, like, weird boys to jump them around the board and so on. I'm going to mechanise mine up, so they can move around the table nice and quick, and they can uh, join in the assault. So these will head off straight towards the opponent. If the opponent ignores them, these will cause... They're quite a sight, aren't they? But they, these will cause trouble if they're ignored. So, uh, multiple functions for them. Uh, first is uh, distracting units, so move them up. If the opponent ignores them, I can disembark them, charge them into vehicles and infantry and tie them down, stop the firepower coming from the opponent. So the opponent can't ignore these, they do move quick enough across the board. Uh, the other function for them is to screen and protect certain units, so I can disembark them and screen them around if I'm anticipating some deep strikers coming in. And the other function for them is to clear away hordes or screens or mobs. So you know, if the opponent's using guardsmen, it's got a, a line of those, send in the orc boys and smash into that line of fire warriors or something like that, charge them in, just like you see in the artwork. So uh, that's the plan for them. So they're not just a waste, you know, they're, they're cheap units for sure, but uh, it's not a waste of points. A very important role for these, uh, multiple functions for them. And look how nice they immediately bulk the army out. Very, very cheap. These are 64 points a time, these vehicles. So very, very cheap. Just pay the st standard points cost and then uh, big shooters on each of them. Which is good, and that keeps the cost down. You used to be able to take rockets on them, but you can't do that anymore, so it's just big shooters as modeled. So that's okay. Uh, so 64 points, duh, duh, duh. and then here, uh, the Orc Boys, 70 points for 10 of them, and the knob, I just give a big chopper. So it's got a bit of punch in close combat. Now, 10 orc boys on the charge is still a lot of attacks. So, uh, I think they'll do all right. Now, what I want to show you here is something else that's pretty good. Yeah, for every 10 models, I just about qualify for this, but for every 10 models in the unit, one orc boy may take a tank buster bomb. So, uh, some of my models already have this on, I just I was thinking I'd give it to the knob, but it says one orc boy. Not a boss knob. So the knob can't carry this. One of the boys has to carry it. So some of these do have this modelled on. I can always add a few more. But look, this one's got the tank buster bomb modelled onto him. So I could do that. No problem. And I think there's a couple others that have that on them as well. So one model in each. Now the tank buster bomb's amazing. Range six, grenade D3, strength eight, minus two, and D6 damage. So even orc boys. Uh, can bust up a tank pretty good. So I'm really happy with these unit choices here. Uh, it gives me my battalion, so plenty of command points here, and then a very useful function for these orc boys. So one, two, three of those all inside the transports. All right, so next is the, the vanguard. This is the elite section of the army, and again, an extra command point for this. So uh, I'll start, it's an index entry, and it's the war boss on the bike, you can't get him in the codex anymore, uh, so I've used the index as a reference for him. So Zog is back. I'm not going to use the Forge World rules or points for him. I'm just he's just going to be customised from the index and from the codex. So uh, Orc Warboss on the bike. Uh, we'll stick him 
just here. Huge model, amazing model. If you're into collecting orcs, I highly recommend this guy. He's utterly huge and it's a beautiful model, so well worth the investment. 10 out of 10 model this one from Forge World. So that's him. If you, you like the colour scheme for the orcs, by the way, uh, you like the way they've come out, then there is a painting tutorial for the orcs on the channel here, uh, so you can follow along uh, from start to finish how to paint these orcs up, just uh, follow step by step, uh, and you can apply that process to all of the orc units. I use the same process on whatever unit you see here in this video. Uh, and then on the Plus channel, there is the in-depth painting tutorial. I'll show you how to paint one of these orc trucks here. A bigger, tougher project, uh, but I use the techniques there to show you how to paint the models inside uh, the vehicle, all of the special effects there on the vehicles and transfers and chipping effect and, and dusting them and so on is all covered in that video. And the link for the Plus channel is in the description below. Uh, but that's Zog here, a cousin of Gut Ripper. So uh, the points for him is 86 points from the index and then 13 points for the power claw uh, which is uh, the weapon that he has here and that, that's it. Okay, so he's decent enough. Uh, he's got seven wounds of six. Uh, he's a bit tougher, he's tougher than six. There's those kind of things going on so he's really good. Movement 14, nice and speedy with him as well. But I improve him by spending one of my command points and taking an extra relic just to make him a bit better. Remember, he's got access to all of these uh, stratagems here. Orcs is never beaten character model, yeah, he can partake of that one, for example. But the relic I give him is the Lucky Stick here. So it's a goth model only, which is his culture. Add one to the hit rolls for attacks made by friendly goth character models whilst they're in six inches of the bear in the fight phase. He'll benefit from his own bubble. So uh, the minus one he's paying for a regular power claw goes back to uh, it's plus one, so it cancels that out. So he'll be on two, back to twos to hit in close combat. So that's a brilliant help. And in addition, you can reroll hit wounds, reroll hit and wound rolls <laughs> for the bearer in the fight phase, so madness. Again, very, very powerful. Twos to hit re-rolling, and then re-rolling your wounds as well. Fantastic. And remember, any sixes, extra attacks. So these two characters here, uh, Zog and Gut Ripper, had powerful HQs. So again, with him, he's gonna join in the assaults. All of these models you're looking at here are part of this big assault, this big charge. Uh, I want to keep him alive as well and be wise, don't want to be reckless with this guy. These are the ones that if they're alive towards the end of the game, they'll they'll mop up what's left. They'll take out stuff, no problem at all. And so perhaps another big function here for these old boys, the opponent's got to chew through for 60 wounds <laughs> to try and get through to these characters. And these characters, you know, Zog's not having to slow down behind this slot. These can move quick, Zog can move up behind, no problem. So really good. Another great thing about these war bosses uh, is the ability to help these units move, advance and still charge as well. To add a bit of speed to this army on the charge also so they perform a vital function for that as well. So uh, another key HQ here, uh, head of the Vanguard detachment. So to fulfill this detachment you need elites, three elites. So I actually have four. The first one is the Pain Boy. So Gut Stitcher makes his return. Beautiful model from Games Workshop, really, really nice. So that's him. Uh, Gut Ripper trusts him to do a good job of patching him back together. So the Pain Boy, very useful uh, unit indeed. Uh, he has, uh, he's not bad at all. His stat line's pretty good. Three's to hit in close combat. He's got four wounds, he's got four attacks, and I've paid the points to give him a power claw as well, so he's actually pretty good. Now he's on minus one, so he'd be on fours to hit, but still he can cause trouble with that power claw, and he can you know, pile in, so you've got Ripper and him, so now all of a sudden you've got even more uh, combat potential. So he can last him three inches of any friendly, friendly uh, it's got stocks tools. Roll d6 each time a clan infantry or bike unit loses a wound whilst within three inches of any friendly clan pain boys. On a six, the unit does not lose that wound. So any type of wounds come free. It's going to help out the old boys, help Gut Ripper, Zog, any other infantry or bikers around. So that's useful. 
Uh, he then has this uh, Grot Orderly here. Now, it, it's not something you pay points for, so it's incorporated into his stat line. Uh, it's a one use here. So, I'm going to use a spare Grot that I have. I, I think this is uh, one that's to help mechs, but it doesn't matter. I can use him. You know, he could help out with uh, medical procedures as well. But I'll keep him nearby, just as a reminder during a game, because uh, this one use only Grot Orderly once is used and that he can be removed. The model won't count for anything in the game, but it's just a reminder. And it's a, a chance to use the little model as well. Uh, once per battle, you can roll the dice when this model has attempted to heal a wound, heal a model using this Sawbones ability, either when determining if the surgery is successful or when determining the number of lost wounds regained. So that's useful. You know, they roll that dreaded one, uh, and then uh, you lose a wound. Oh, and then it's a 2 plus, you gain d3. Well, he can just help you with a reroll uh, of either the result or the actual attempt itself. So his ability to heal wounds as well. So I've got Gut Ripper's been in the fight, he's taken three or four wounds, a couple of wounds, or Zog's in trouble, or any of the other characters taking wounds, there's still more fighting to go on, then uh, he can start healing models as well. Very, very useful, the Pain Boy. Uh, so glad to have him in the army, great looking model as well. So the Pain Boy is 52 points, and then 13 points for the Power Claw. Uh, so 65 points, not very expensive at all. And he has proved useful in games. You know, towards the end of the game, try and keep him alive as well. Uh, you know, key models are taking damage and he's able to uh, heal them up. And then if he's able to keep models from dying, you know, every model that's saved, if you total those points up, he soon pays for himself. So uh, useful enough. So that's the first Elite. And again, he's to be buried away, hidden amongst the bodyguard, amongst the vehicles, and uh, used that way. So, yeah, uh, tank busters. Uh, comments that I've been reading, people have been saying the, this is the the powerful unit now uh, for the orcs. I've always been a big fan of them, uh, but now they seem to be really good. So I've gone back to my two units of them. I had proposed in the, a previous list to take units of ten, uh, but I'm not going to go back to the old units of eight with those just to keep the points down. I've been able to use the points and other things. Uh, I used to put them around and protect them inside looted wagons. I'm just going to count these as trucks uh, now instead. I'll just use them for that purpose. Maybe looted wagons, the rules for those are on the way. Might be able to incorporate them into the army at some point, but for now uh, I'll just use uh, truck rules for these. So one and two here again, running out of <laughs> space on the on the screen, and then my tank busters. These are all. Most of these are conversions. Check out the Tactica video for these. It's on the channel. Uh, there you'll see. I'll, I'll just. I'll be able to zoom in. I zoom in, and you can see the the close up work. And I'll talk a bit about how I did the conversions. And there's some old videos here on the channel uh, from a while ago uh, of these, how I put them together, and then I'll show you on the video even before I painted them up. Uh, so, give you an idea of how I put these together, because you do... I did need a lot of them, so I had to do some conversion work. I'm not keen on the original Tank Buster set. So, two units of eight. So, the, again, these are joining the Assault, but they're to move up with the army and provide some nasty firepower to try and soften the opponent up. So, anti-vehicle especially, uh, Anti-monsters, anti-heavy infantry, uh, but specifically I'm thinking of vehicles is where these will be needed. And then a couple of little well-trained squigs, or bomb squigs, which are great fun to go with these units as well. And, and orcs would say they're great, they're a great fun army. If you're looking for an army that's good fun to collect, I've enjoyed collecting them and painting them, and they're great fun to use in games as well. Great, great strong fluff and narrative and, and theme running with the orcs. But uh, this this army's looking this army's looking big here. It really is looking pretty good, and and you know we're only halfway through <laughs> the army. So, uh, but tank busters. So the key weapon is this rocket launcher. Eight of them, giving them all the rocket launchers. I haven't gone for any other upgrades like rocket pistols and so on or tank hammers. It's just the rockets I'm going to rely on. Uh, it's range twenty four. So 
I'm glad there's that maneuverability there with the trucks just to drive them around, move them 12, get them in range of targets, which is what they'll need to do. Uh, and then, and there's, they're very, very vulnerable on foot. They got a six up save. So if they get caught out in the open, they're usually wiped out very, very fast. And the opponent knows they're a nasty unit, so they put even more effort into trying to destroy them. So it's very important to put these inside trucks to add that bit of protection. And it's like a triple layer. So you've got the unit itself, then the next layer of protection is the vehicle, and the next layer of protection is the five plus invon save bubble that they'll be operating inside uh, the invon save of the big mech on the bike. And then him repairing these as they take damage as well. So there's all levels of protection here I'm trying to create here for the orcs. Um, so it's an amazing weapon, the rocket launcher. Strength 8, minus 2 and 3, flat 3 damage is deadly. So you've got your 8 shots, even 5s. So you're going to sort of get about 3 hits, which is nasty enough. Uh, other times you get more than that. Any 6s you get to hit with Daka Daka, Daka will generate more shots. The thing that makes it even more powerful is tank hunters. You can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by this unit target vehicles. So all of a sudden, there's been times when I've scored 7. Seven, I think even eight hits I got once with unit of eight of these because you're just generating extra shots, you're re rolling your hits, and all of a sudden you can start racking up the hits coming through. You know, and if a lean rust or, or whatever vehicle it is takes eight hits from a strength eight minus two three damage weapon, that tank that tank's in big trouble. So, uh, these I think are a powerful unit for sure. Uh, then add a couple of bomb squigs, so they're 10 points of time, two squigs. Uh, see, one of the reasons why I was wanting to go for unit 10 is it says for every five uh, tank busters or boss knobs in the unit can be accompanied by up to two bomb squigs. If you do go for unit 10, you get access to four squigs, but I've just kept it eight and taken the two just there. Great thing, I look, they want you only these squigs, but you can shoot with them, range 18, assault one, but you're on twos to hit. Where are we now? Yeah, oh, it's here in the ballistic skill. Two plus, that's right. Uh, and then your weapon skill as well. So if you use them in close combat, if you charge into close combat with squigs, they can still fight and they'll be on weapon skill two plus. So two's to hit. Remember, that's still re rollable because of tank hunters. And I think still subject to Daka 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 as well. So you might get your one hit with the squig, but if it's a six, it's gonna generate an extra hit as well. And if the hit does go through, it's strength eight minus two and D6 damage. So powerful enough. So I, I carry these around, try and let them loose quite early in the game, knowing that my tank busters are gonna get targeted and try and let them loose at the right target. So if there's a key target, so I'm gonna ambush a predator and I really wanna make sure it dies, I'll let the squigs off and let them uh, have a go as well. Just try and make sure all the damage comes through. So squigs, very useful. Um, so that makes them 10 in total, and they fit nicely inside their trucks. So points for those uh, is 17 points of time for the tank busters, and then uh, an extra 20 points for the bomb squigs. It's 156 points. And again, 64 points of time for the two trucks as well. So yep, in total, you're looking at about 220 points of time but in there you've got a, a unit that's pretty well protected and armed with horrific firepower so very very useful unit and many a time they have caused dreadful you know shocking damage during a game and now I think the potential to cause even more with Daka 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 uh, and some stratagems as well uh, more DACA, two command points, so it uses just the right point. But before an orc unit from your army shoots in the shooting phase, until the end of that phase, the DACA DACA ability triggers on unmodified rolls of five or six. So five or six, no matter what's happened. You've, you've moved, you've advanced, the opponent's minus two to hit. Play the stratagem doesn't matter. Five or sixes will get you hits. Very, very powerful stratagem indeed. And the other one is extra stick bombs, one command point. And I used this in, that, in the recent orc battle report against the Imperial Knights. Use the stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. Select an orc infantry unit from your army, so they're an orc infantry. Up to 10 models in that unit can fire a grenade weapon in that phase instead of only one. And that grenade is, they're all armed with tank buster bombs. So, <laughs> at the night I fired eight D3 
strength eight minus two d6 <laughs> shots from that so it's a nasty trick uh, that you can do as well okay so tank busters i think a very very strong unit indeed so that's the i'm trying to go for yes the brutal charge i've got my nasty characters here uh, the Orc Boys, they're the ones that go headlong in for the charge run over on the gun line. But at the same time, uh, I want to soften up the opponents, try and take out the heavy firepower and the key vehicles and so on. Because I don't want my stuff getting decimated and let the opponent just have free reign with their firepower. I want to be able to soften them up with decent shooting. And so this is the mechanised part of my fire support. Now my previous list for the Orcs, my firepower was pretty much them. And often the opponent knew that, and so these got picked on and taken out quite quickly, and then my firepower was cut down, and sometimes it uh, backfired a bit for the Orcs. But now I've got firepower coming from somewhere else. This is just one element of the firepower that I have now for the Orcs. So yeah, they'll play a vital role for sure, just as important as ever. But thankfully these will have support now, coming from other units. So, that's Tank Busters. There's one more Elite's choice. And that's the Mega Knobs. Uh, you know, one of my favourite units sculpt wise, that's a brilliant set. And if you don't have these, you collect Orcs, you don't have Mega Knobs, I encourage you to get the set because they are brilliantly sculpted. There's loads of options on the sprues, and you can customise them and build them. Uh, and they're just a very imposing uh, set, a great unit for sure. So I'm just going to take a unit of four. I've always run with four. And I'm going to stick with that. I was tempted to expand them in size, but the way the points have worked out, I'll keep them at four, and four is going to be enough, I reckon. So, one, two, three. There's Kyle with his kill saws, and then there's the fourth one just there. One with a yellow helmet, Imperial Fist helmet. I think I'll make him the, the knob, if not Kyle, will be the boss mega knob. So, I think they're a solid unit choice. They've come crashing down in points as well. Um, the strength five, they're slow, so I will transport them around the table as opposed to making them walk. You want to make them, you want to get them somewhere. Uh, they're strength five, they've got three wounds, there's loads of wounds, three attacks, which is a very healthy amount of attacks for an infantry unit. Uh, leadership six, uh, two up save, better leadership there for the boss mega knob. So, uh, their function then is to add more weight to Gut Ripper's charge. So you've got Gut Ripper charging in. The pain boy charging in, and now you've got a lot of power claw armed, uh, super heavy infantry here to add even more weight to the charge as well. They're also to perform uh, the vital role of being a bodyguard for Gut Ripper, so you often you will see them fighting around with Gut Ripper, protecting him. The opponent's got to try and chew his way through these and all those wounds, the two up save to try and get through to them. It's a nice, solid, dependable unit. It's going to take a lot of firepower, a lot of effort to try and bring them down entirely. Uh, so kill saws they're armed with one two three of them uh, kill saw Kyle here has the two kill saws so you'll get an extra attack for that AP minus four straight damage of two they're all going to be a minus one to the hit rolls so they're going to go down to four plus to hit in close combat I was going to go for see one of the units I dropped was uh, the wild banner the wire banner, yeah. To add plus one to my hit rolls, but I took that in the end. It was expensive, about 80 odd points. So I, I removed that and it let me go for the battalion and so on. So they're just going to be forced to hit. But remember, any sixes they score will generate extra attacks. And so I'm going to use that as a bit of a recovery there from being on just forced to hit. But still, they've got three attacks each. So on average, they should be getting one or two hits each. And that should still cause trouble uh, for most targets so I think they're useful enough uh, they've got custom shooters one two three four or one two three Carl's just armed with the two kill source so points in total for them 20 points time 19 points the power claw two points the custom shooters and then 23 points for the two kill saws is a total of 148 points so cheap enough a vital bodyguard a bit of punch here uh, for my assaulting sort of HQ part of the army the elite HQ part uh, here, so you'll have that's the combo Gut Ripper, Pain Boy, and then the Mega Knobs. You'll see them working together uh, there. So that fulfills the Vanguard with, with one each with one uh, elite spare. So happy with how that's turned out. Look at the army now, there's a, a mess of of boys. Now, if I imagine if these boys weren't in the, in the list and you can remove these trucks, 
Well, the Southern Hussar would look quite small, but thankfully, cheap battalion of all boys and trucks just really bulks the army up nicely. All right, so I've, cl I've cleared a space <laughs> for, the, for the next batch of stuff coming through. So, but uh, what you have there is the assault part of the army. So there's this, there's mechanised firepower coming through. I uh, can deal with hordes, I can deal with heavy infantry, and I've got nasty characters. And, you know, the speed here, these are all transported around. You've got 12 inch, 14 inch move with these. So, quick enough. So, the last part of the army is the spearhead. So, 1 HQ, 3 heavy supports is what is required. So the first HQ, just or, or the, the one HQ I need for this one, I'll just cover that first. Yeah, you because know, I just painted it, this one up and started using them during the index, and then the codex comes along. Tragedy can't use them anymore. So I've gone back to the index, and again a vital part for the army. And that's just the regular Big Mac. Just here. And he has a name, it's Napoleon Gitsmasher, is his name, and he'll be in charge of the grand battery <laughs> here for the orcs. So he is uh, 55 points, 5 points to the big chopper which is modelled onto him, it's a lead one, I got him from eBay I think, uh, and then 20 points to the custom force field. So the idea is to have my attacking part of the army deploy everyone within that sort of 18 inch sphere, wholly within. So my attacking force is all protected by 5 plus in one save. Then I have my defensive block of the grand battery and there to deploy it within 18 inches here, this eight, 18 inch circumference here, this width of 18 inches uh, to add protection to them. So that's what he does. Uh, he's also there to repair. So my mech guns, which is what you're going to see a bit in a moment, uh, he can do repairs and then they do, they are, the key word for them is vehicle, so he can do repairs. So the mech guns protected, take a bit of damage, he can move around and do repairs on them and restore them at the same time. So a vital unit here uh, and sort of a nice central figure to oversee this grand battery here for the Orcs. So he comes out to 80 points in total with the custom force sword and big chopper all paid for. So I call him Napoleon just to reflect sort of the grand battery Napoleonic style. You know Napoleon would fire the grand battery, the big guns first, soften up the opponent and then send in uh, his uh, army. So that's the idea for the Orcs as well. So, yep, I think maybe I'll just cover the battle wagon, yeah I think I should, okay, so it's not a battle wagon, it's a battle wagon, it's the bone breaker, it's this big long vehicle now has made a return, the shuttle bus as it's become known, this is where Gut Ripper, uh, the Mega Knobs, the Pain Boy, it will all be escorted inside this thing, remember it's got this 5 plus invun save, coming from the Big Mac on the bike to protect it. And then the further protection is the depth of wounds. It's got 16 wounds the opponent to try and get through. Uh, toughness, eight. I need to remember this is not open topped anymore. It's uh, closed cover, which gives it its better toughness. Toughness, eight, which will help. I'll not be able to fire anything out of the top of it. So uh, it'd be okay though, because I haven't got tank busters aside. I've just got mega knobs. They're geared for combat. Gut Ripper, the Pain Boy, all geared for combat really. So I'm not worried about that. So I'll take the toughness eight instead. Nice and quick, again, movement 12, it can go. It has six attacks in close combat. This is gonna have quite a, a good function here as well in close combat, this thing. Uh, and just a, a tough enough vehicle to try and deal with. And because of the amount of other units I've got, you know, the opponent can try and go after this if, if he wants to, but I think there's gonna be other targets that are gonna be a higher priority. And if you're firing at something else and not at this, then it's free to move up cause trouble. So just run through the points I paid for it. So the bone breaker then is 140 points to start off with. Uh, I pay 19 points to the death roller as modelled on. Fantastic upgrade kit that Games Workshop supply. Uh, then I pay the points. Five points for grot riggers. Just means each turn I can restore a wound. I think you have to roll a two plus but it just means I could top, try and top the wounds up because I'm anticipating damage. Uh, then 15 points I pay for three one, two, three big shooters, uh, as modelled on, so great, uh, just a little bit of firepower I can use of that. And then 15 points to the kill cannon. So that's this 
customized thing that I made. We're just going to count it as a kill cannon. Uh, previously, I was using it as four rockets. I paid the points for, but now I'm just going to pay the points for a kill cannon. If only 15 points just means I can chuck out some firepower uh, with that. So primarily, there's, there's three roles for it. Perhaps the most important is transportation. So it's designed to transport my units and protect them. The next role for it is a little bit of firepower, but it's not a major aspect. And then thirdly, close combat. The death roller is uh, incredible. Yeah, and it's got a bone breaker ram as well. So the death roller then, plus one strength. So he's going to fight at strength nine on, on full health here. AP minus two. It's two damage, and it's plus three to hit rolls. So you know, five plus to hit becomes two plus to hit with six attacks. And then when you charge, you get an extra d6 attacks on top of that. So potential of 12 attacks or more because it's goth. So if I roll any sixes, we generate more attacks. This death roll is scary. And uh, I, sh I show you in the tactics video. There is a tactics video up and live with this one. Show you all the different ways that you can use it. Some options, very crafty, uh, that you can use the bone breaker for. But actually a pretty good unit in close combat. It's another unit I can call upon to, to do something in close combat to help the orcs out. So I'll shift him out of the way, but he's to join in with the assaults. So now Gut Ripper's got a, a fine escort to move him up the table. So that's one heavy support. I have two more. That's two batteries of guns. They'll, they'll merge, no doubt, to form, uh, you know, they'll deploy sort of near each other to form this big ground battery, but it's two separate choices I've made. So, just to fulfill this uh, spearhead. So it's mech guns. You can take just one, or you can take up to six of them. So I've gone for two units, two units of three. It's taken me ages to paint, loads of little grots all over the place. Uh, <laughs> to paint up, but I've got them done. So one, two, three, and one, two, three, <laughs> three of these. <laughs> Evil laugh <laughs> for these because these should cause trouble. I'm anticipating, anticipating the power of the the firepower from these to take out a bane blade a turn. I reckon they can do it. So uh, that, that's that's uh, powerful, a powerful option for the orcs, for sure. Oh, these little grots! I painted up using exactly the same process as the orc boys. It did take about half as long, they're half the size, so it didn't take too long. But uh, doing thirty of them does take a while. Yeah, but oh, seriously, I'm running out of <laughs> space for these. I've not seen this whole army together yet, so what we'll do when I've finished here is we'll lay the army out uh, in full array, and then you can we'll zoom out and you can take a, a closer look. But um, yeah, there's a spare uh, grot there as well, ammo runt. I might just have hang around with one of the models, but uh, I think he goes with the Meganob set. But anyway, this is the last of these. Just freshly off the painting desk, these, but they're all done. It was a, a great relief to finally get these finished. But uh, there's the mech guns one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know there's been different discussion about which uh, weapon choices to go for. I've gone for the custom mega cannon. People have said take the tractor cannon, it is really good. It also hits uh, strength eight minus two d6 damage. But controversially, I'm going to say that the custom mega cannon is better. I reckon it is a better weapon. Um, so, a number of reasons for that, but the, the, the mech gun here, so you've got, it's a 5 plus save, but you've got 6 wounds for the opponent to try and chew through here. So, you know, a single last cannon shot's more than likely not going to do it. You're going to need a, a fair bit of firepower to come through to remove just one of these. You can take up to 6 of them, then once you deploy, they become separate units. So the opponent's got to target each one separately and try and spread that firepower around. Uh, remember that you've got this guy doing repairs and offering the 5 plus invon save. So you get a last cannon shot come through, roll a 5 plus, just ignore the shot. So useful bit of protection for them. The crew aren't relevant anymore, they have to stand around the gun and you don't shoot at them, it's just everything's directed at the gun, measured from the gun, you fire at the gun. Once the gun is destroyed, uh, the crew just disappear. These aren't to be shot at the way, they, the way they've structured it here. 
uh, range, visibility, all attacks made by mech gun are measured from the mech gun, not the crew. So, yeah, it's a number of options. Uh, so I, I, I go through the options in the Tactica video uh, for these, but just the one I've gone for, the, the custom mega cannon. Um, so range 36, a nice healthy range. So with these you'll often find I'll try and deploy them, even though they're the defensive part, I do need to try and deploy them so that they cover the battlefield with range as much as possible. So often they'll deploy them quite centrally and quite high up. So I know the rest of the Orkheim is going to flood past. So these high up just so that I can cover the board in range. Don't the opponent backing out and operating out of range and these uh, can't shoot. Because they are slow if you move them, they're three inches and you can advance, but they'll not be able to shoot. So 36, so it should put you in, in range of three quarters, two thirds of the entire board. So then, it's heavy D6 shots. So yeah, you could roll one, or you could get six shots all of a sudden. Another great thing for these is the ballistic skill. It's four plus ballistic skill. Uh, so really good. They do have the Daka 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 special rule, uh, which isn't a culture, so these are affected by it. So any sixes you get to hit, are going to generate extra shots so yeah really powerful uh, there as well so four pluses to hit and then daka 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 as well generating extra shots so i think i think that's a, a blistering amount of firepower coming from a very cheap unit uh, they work out at uh, 60 points each that's the platform the gun and the crew 60 points a time so that is 360 points for the whole lot so that's, that's miles less than quarter of the army and just the big mech added in so yeah, and look at the footprint, look at the size of them on the board. Once you get your hits, it's strength 8. Brilliant. It's AP minus 3, so you're going to bypass most of the armour save the opponent has. And the damage used to be D3, I'm pretty sure it was in the, in the index. It's now D6, so the damage potentially is uh, horrific. If you roll any modified hit rolls of 1, uh, you take a mortal wound after the attacks have been resolved. That's not going to be any problem. You've got six wounds to try and get through it. There's no damage profile here, so your ballistic seal is not going to be affected. And the mech, big mech, can go around doing repairs. No problem at all. So I think it's a, a very powerful weapon. And I think uh, one good round of shooting from one of them will take out a Lehman Russ. No problem. If you get 2d6, 3d6 damage on your average vehicle, that vehicle is in a big, big trouble. So I, I, I rate them. Rate them very highly indeed. And because there's six of them, it's going to take a, a lot of effort here for the opponent to try and remove these. So the idea of the Orkheim is just a satur saturation of targets. The opponent thinks, well, what? They need to take out something, but they can't do everything. And then they, they, they take out a few things here and there, but by the time they've done that and turn one's over, the Orcs are upon them. And that's the... <laughs> you know, ov overwhelm the opponent is the idea with the Orcs, both with firepower and then the glory of an overwhelming... Uh, green skin charge as well so that's the plan and that's the list uh, it's a, a big orc army here but still with you know still paying the points out for decent firepower decent transports decent elite choices as well so yes it's a bulky army but still uh, it's not cheap you know there's this quality in here for sure so the list is finished that's the army that I've put together, we talked about the other tactics, clan cultures and so on uh, we've talked about the stratagems potentially to use uh, and the overall battle plan so uh, I'm going to zoom out now and we'll take a look at the entire I'll just lay it all out and give you a, a better view alright so there's the list, running out of space here but <laughs> that's the Orc army uh, laid out here so you've got your defensive block just here, this is the, the grand battery these six mech guns they're the custom mega cannons. There's Git Smasher to overwatch them, to uh, keep an eye on them, to do repairs, to offer the 5 plus invun save. That's my firebase, but still a sizable chunk of the army uh, for about 400, 430 odd points there uh, for that lot. Then the rest of the points is spent on the attack, but it's not a, a reckless charge. I've gone for a decent amount of protection for these, nicely mechanized up, uh, both for the shuttle bus, the, uh, the mega knobs, and gut ripper, and so on. And the boys there as well. These are all bikes that can keep up and join in. And even the tank busters there, nicely mechanised up and protected. And there to provide a bit of mobile fire support as well as the eye moves in. So the overall battle plan for the Orc Army then is to soften up the opponent with decent firepower for sure. Uh, and then disrupt the opponent with the Orc boys. Uh, 
and the characters and so on, and then close in for the kill uh, with these nasty characters protecting them. Gut Ripper, uh, Zog here, two nasty characters, try and protect those and let them loose at just the right point uh, to cause absolute havoc. But I think the damage potential of this army is very high. Uh, it's pretty well protected. The opponent's got to try and chew for all of these vehicles. And there's that 5 plus Inbun save that's just going to block like one third, literally, of the damage uh, that can come through. So that will help out. The ability to do repairs and heal wounds as well in the army. And just the, the model count and the number of wounds to try and chew for it. You know, 10 wounds a time for these transports. And there's 16 wounds over there as well. These are 6 wounds at a time. So a lot of work for the opponent to try and grind through. And so that means, you know, the opponent just can't deal with all of this that's presented and then so the orcs can go about uh, that word that I said earlier on overwhelm the opponent both with firepower and also uh, in close combat as well but there it is that's the list uh, for the orcs Th this is what has slowed me down but I've managed to get them painted up uh, and finished off so the, the whole orc army is done now ready for war uh, the plan in the future then is to uh, well, I've got some games lined up with these I plan to uh, do these battles on both the regular channel here on YouTube and then over on the Plus channel as well. So if you want to see more Orc action on top of what you see here on YouTube uh, then check out the Plus channel uh, for more Orc content. But there it is, that's the video. And if you like the way the models have come out check out the painting tutorials on both the channels as well. But there it is, the Orcs are ready for war. Gut Ripper uh, is psyching himself up to go on the rampage and see what kind of havoc him and his lads can cause. Uh, that's the complete army for the Orcs. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.